Good morning pals and welcome, welcome to yet another vlog. I know, who is she? Today is quite an exciting delivery slash post day for me. As you might have heard, the literary event of the year was this year. It was on Tuesday, Sally Rooney's latest novel Intermezzo was published to huge critical acclaim which is great because we're proud of Sally Rooney in Ireland. I pre-ordered my book in May but then the lovely Kennys announced that they were releasing a limited edition so I contacted them and they were really nice and they said yeah no bother I can change over my order and they didn't actually even charge me anymore. That's the kind of service you get from independent bookshop. I've been to Pilates already this morning it's like it's 10 40 lads and i am back in my pajamas because i've nothing else to do outside today and why would you be wandering around your house in clothes that aren't pajamas or something akin to pajamas i'll never know when to do some plant care my plants have thrips again so they're going in the bin i'm done this is the fifth time i cannot get rid of them they are little demons i have two plants left and that's my plant collection i had about 15 or 16 but we're just not going to talk about it okay let's just ignore it let's just pretend i don't like plants anymore because i'm done i'm so done with those little feckers So the book has arrived. I can't believe I'm one of these people on YouTube that's doing an unboxing. But uh, here we are. Don't want to give my address away. It's like wrapped up in bubble wrap and everything. That's lovely because I find sometimes when you order stuff online, like books, they come and they're all scuffed and damaged and whatever so kenny's have given me a little no oh wow okay so thank you for your order blah 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 as you can see from the attached faber statement which is this one the edition arrived into us slightly damaged in its entirety we would like to assure you that the cover of all copies of the limited edition have been damaged so all customers are receiving same and by way of apology a second unsigned limited edition will be supplied to you free of charge compliments of the book's publisher's favor this is the kenny's exclusive limited edition and let's see i've seen pictures of this online and i didn't notice any damage but look we'll see so the front is lovely look at that excuse me and the back is like i guess slightly scuffed is that the damage they're talking about because it's quite minimal. Sally Rooney's signature. I also have a signed copy of Beautiful World, Where Are You? But it's not a like limited edition one. That's a lot nicer than books I've received from Amazon and never gotten any apologies from them. Cool. It's really nice. It doesn't have a dust jacket. This is the hard cover edition. Beautiful. And you know what, lads? This was only one euro more expensive than the actual normal hardback edition. And it's signed and they didn't charge me the extra euro because they sound like that. I had a little bit of work to do and I did it. It's done. It's 3.15 and my little reward then for finishing that was to be able to go and start my Sally Rooney book. I don't think I have, but have I ever told you about my house bag? I think this is a great idea and I don't know where it came from, but I have a feeling it wasn't my idea. So I have this thing and I, I feel like a lot of us have this where 
you kind of have your emotional support things that you carry around the house with you everywhere all the time. And then particularly as women, we never have pockets, right? I want to bring my phone and I want to bring my book, maybe my notebook, maybe my journal, maybe some colors to color in, maybe a few little crafty things. But like my hands are full. I'm not able to carry all this stuff and I'm afraid of dropping them. Enter the house bag. So I basically just went out and bought like a massive kind of um, toiletry bag. And this one, like it has a little pocket on the front and I like to put like bookmarks and like annotation stuff in it. And it has like little, little pockets for, I guess, like makeup pens and stuff, but I put actual pens. And then inside I can put like whatever I'm carrying around. I'm packing light today because I basically just want to read this book, but like, this thing has absolutely revolutionized my life. I'm just pottering around my house like this all the time, putting in things like, I can put snacks in here. We're done. This is, this is the height of sophistication in 2024. House bag, I'm telling you. the first chapter and I think as I've said it before and I'll say it again nobody writes like Sally Rooney for better or for worse personally I love how she writes one thing that I probably wouldn't even notice only for it's something that people keep bringing up about her writing but she doesn't use quotation marks and it's definitely a choice like it's an intentional choice but I think it flows really well sometimes it is a little difficult to tell between thoughts and things that are said out loud but somehow I feel like it doesn't matter it's almost like we're supposed to decide ourselves what has been said aloud and what has been said inside the mind and I really love that there's something so intimate about the way she's writing yeah we start out so the first chapter we learn that there are two men Ivan and Peter and Peter seems to be an older brother but he seems to be quite a bit older maybe about 10 years older than Ivan and they seem to be very different and uh, Ivan is a chess prodigy and Peter can't make head nor tails of his little brother they're not particularly close and we have spent the first chapter with Peter and through Peter's perspective and we have met a couple of characters in his life a couple of women and there is one character and something that hit me straight away because you don't see a whole lot of representation for this but it's very relevant to me is a young person living with chronic pain and there have been some parts and little passages that I have underlined. I'm going to read you this bit and it, it hit me like a truck. I mean page 11. It hit me like a truck. Like a kind of death. What happened? A kind of death you survive out of politeness, respect for others, out of selfless love. I love how uh, Rooney's writing is so self-referential as well, like how she'll write something and it's almost like a little throwaway comment and then later in the book she will repeat that sentence or say that sentence in a way that changes it slightly and she's done it already I'm not going to tell you what it is or what she says but Sally Rooney's writing is so existential and I love that that's how my brain works I just can't stop rabbiting in my brain all the time and I just feel like something about the intimacy and the politics and the way that Sally Rooney notices things and that nothing, nothing at all, even the things that seem like a throwaway comment, they're not throwaway. Everything is so thought about. And I wonder if part of the appeal for me when I read Sally Rooney is that she's writing in geographical locations that if I'm not necessarily familiar with, I'm aware of, which kind of adds to the intimacy then as well. And then obviously I was raised in Ireland and Sally Rooney was raised in Ireland. Pretty much everybody that was raised in Ireland educated in a Catholic school and Catholicism and Christianity sort of infiltrated our lives. And the things that we say, even now as an adult, I say phrases that are very 
Catholic and that sound very religious. I'm not a practicing Catholic at all. I have absolutely no beliefs. I would consider myself probably an atheist, but it's interesting how she references Catholicism and religion in a way that also seems quite removed. It's very Irish. It feels very familiar. Like I would say like, oh God, love him, things like that. And it's just something I say. It's not, it's not me wishing God's love on somebody. So I'm on page, I finished page 18 in the book. My copy starts on page three. So I've read 15 pages and lads, I'm all in, I'm all in. It is the next day. I haven't updated and I've gotten to page 138. So I have finished chapter five. So I left off after chapter one where we had met Peter. So in the second chapter, we meet his younger brother, Ivan. Ivan is a little chess prodigy. I think he's about 22. He's a really interesting character. So we start out chapter two. When we meet him, he is at like a chess competition. Quite quickly, we realize that he's very logical and his brother Peter has referenced him as somebody who might potentially be autistic. And you can definitely see this in the way that he is written. I think it's interesting that Sally Rooney decided to write a character like this, particularly when we are seeing an, a massive upsurge of people with different neurodivergent diagnoses. And I think it's a really important thing to talk about. And I'm really glad that she did it in this book. But of course, Ivan is living his life in the way that he has always lived his life. Nobody has ever medicalized or pathologized him. He has never had any diagnoses. It's just something that other people might realize about him. And he references himself so often as really awkward. It's done really well. But there was a particular passage that I read and I think it really encompasses how Ivan moves through the world, how he feels, how his brain works. And I think it will be very relatable to a lot of people. How often in his life he has found himself a frustrated observer of apparently impenetrable systems, watching other people participate effortlessly in structures he can find no way to enter or even understand. So often that it's practically baseline, just normal existence for him. And this is not only due to the irrational nature of other people and the consequent irrationality of the rules and processes they devise. It's due to Ivan himself, his fundamental unsuitedness to life. He knows this. He feels himself to have been formed somehow with something other than life in mind. Only Sally Rooney could have written that in that way. There's something about her writing that I just find so digestible and yet so horrendously heartbreaking in terms of the story. Ivan is at this chess championship as I have mentioned and he meets this woman there, Margaret. Margaret is about 10 years older than him. She is separated from her husband. They seem to get along quite well and isn't it lovely how you can kind of traverse your life and make your way through life and think that you have met all the people that you're going to meet, you've loved all the people you're going to love, you've had all these experiences that you're going to have and you're never going to have anything different and then every now and again you just meet somebody and you feel like they've been in your life for your whole life and it just feels like they get you and it happens rarely but I think Sally here has written that sort of experience really well and it's made me feel kind of weirdly nostalgic but again just what an author but actually as I've mentioned I finished reading after chapter five last night because normally I read until I'm worn out and then I just roll over and go to sleep but last night I didn't do that I read the end of chapter five and I had to stop because lads my head hurts so bad from weeping and again this particular thing that affected me so much I don't think that it's going to affect the vast majority of people in the way that it affects me but as I mentioned, we have a character that lives with chronic pain and chapter five, 
there is an interaction with this character that honestly just ruined me. So this character kind of speak is speaking to Peter. Uh, her name is Sylvia and she says that she wants him to remember the way that she was before her accident and before she lived with all this pain and everything that this pain took from her and the way that it's written I'm not gonna read how it was written but oh my god like literally like couldn't stop crying and you know when you just feel that scene in something and as I've mentioned like chronic pain is not something you see represented in young people in traditional media very often and it's just so nice to see and representation really matters and I find it really upsetting when I'm represented in this way but also people don't get what it's like to be a young person and to look like you have the world at your fingertips and to look like you're doing really well and to look like you've got all this but actually behind closed doors to be spending 12 plus hours a day lying down to not be able to do what you want to do to not be able to work the hours that you want to work to not be able to consequently then have the money that you need to do the things that you want to do with your life to get ahead as an adult and there's there's so much to it and it's really difficult to carry but we do and there's this kind of consensus that if somebody looks like they're carrying something well then it's not heavy but it's really heavy it is really heavy just to see that represented in a way that's not miserable and self-deprecating but at the same time feel sort of desperate and so personal to my own situation it just struck me because it's not something that I see or witness very often outside of my own personal experience so that's where we're at we are at page 138 it's I think I have about another 300 pages to go and I feel like I could just sit down and read this whole book in one sitting I'm not going to do that because there's so much in Sally Rooney's writing that I want to absorb a lot better. Good morning, it's Monday and I didn't do a whole lot yesterday because we had like a really super stormy day which was absolutely ideal. Would have been ideal for reading but I just felt really tired and only read like a chapter last night so haven't progressed that far into the book since I last checked in. Yesterday was lovely, just kind of my niece and nephew came down, it spilled rain, it was really windy, we sat in, we lit the fire, we played. Then when they left I like crocheted, watched some YouTube, just took it handy, it was really nice. Had a really good sleep last night. So generally I wake up every other hour when I sleep and that's just how I sleep. And um, last night I actually only woke up about three times, which is an absolute win and I got like nine hours sleep. But of course, then I have to pay for that because I have a really sore upper back today. Now I'm full of the good painkillers, right? And it's not my neck. My neck I can move. But if I try to... Fuck, that's so... (laughs) 
That's so bad. And it kind of hurts to breathe. And normally, I think a normal person would be like, I should probably see a doctor about this. But for me, it's something that kind of ebbs and flows, but it's just never been this bad before. I have a condition where my body parts don't stay where they're supposed to be. And it seems to really affect my spine. Fun. I know that I'm disabled and I know that I have a disability and that has been the case for quite a few years now. Yet when something kind of different happens or something gets worse, my brain literally goes like, wait, this is almost like something that is disabling. Um, I'm like, no, not, not possible, not possible. Even though I literally know I have a disability and something that I'm going to have to manage for the rest of my life and something that's going to ebb and flow, my brain is just literally like, but no, my body says otherwise though. So I just haven't felt in the mood for a whole lot of anything this morning. I did do a good long walk on my treadmill because I don't have it in me to leave the house today. It was nice. I scraped that serotonin from the absolute bottom of the barrel. So that was good. And now I'm going to do a little bit of yoga for like my upper back and see if I can loosen something out because I feel like I'm going to spend my day, if not my week, lying on a heat pad and hoping for the best. I was actually supposed to go to Dublin with my mum today. Um, I really want to see an exhibition in the Gallery of Photography and it's going to be gone on October 12th and my mum wants to potter around some shops so we were going to go today but it's actually raining and we said we just leave it off till Thursday and I'm so glad because I literally don't know, don't know how I could do today. Body. So please join me in a nice, comfortable seat of your choice. And exhale. Awesome. Baby, the little saucer size circles with the nose. You're going to draw little baby circles one way. And then we're going to rest along the right ear. So we have these tools here. You can press the left palm into the air. as I'm back and I'm at that point in a reading vlog where I'm always like I'm not quite sure what I should talk about because I'm always really conscious of not giving spoilers and I feel like even talking about things kind of contextually is a little bit spoilery at times because people don't want to know like about like even certain tropes being in certain books but I have done a bit of reading horizontally there today and I'm on page 274 so we're moving along a bit we're moving along something I don't know if I've actually mentioned is that uh, I've never read the Brothers Karamazov but given the name of Ivan, Peter and Alexi the dog, you can definitely see there's a little bit of a, a nod there. This book is definitely like a book for Sally Rooney fans. You're not going to like it if you don't like Sally Rooney's books. If you don't like the discouraging of quotation marks, you're not going to like this book. If you don't like the way that Sally Rooney writes, you're not going to like this book. If you don't like Sally Rooney's politics, you're not going to like this book. It's definitely for Sally Rooney fans, but I feel like Sally Rooney has absolutely matured as an author over time. Conversations with Friends is probably, I think, personally, her least accomplished novel, which was her debut. Normal People then came next, and then Beautiful World after that, and then of course Intermezzo. You can definitely see how she has matured within her writing. I personally probably preferred Normal People because five stars is a feeling, pals. But I think Beautiful World was probably the technically better novel. And then once again, Intermezzo has jumped in on that and absolutely risen the bar again. I really appreciate the characters in this. Sally Rooney's books have always been about her characters. It's really interesting because obviously this book is set in Dublin, but it's also set in Leitrim, which is kind of in the West, much smaller 
parts of Ireland. Definitely much more traditionally Irish, kind of small Irish places, if not rural places. It just seems so funny to me that this book is so huge across the world and that there are people out there that are just so cool and so accomplished and so worldly and they're out there reading this book and they're romanticising Leitrim. It's just kind of fun to me and I don't think anybody shouldn't be romanticising Leitrim. It's just this really funny thing. I, I find that really interesting about Irish books in general anyway. Just how people read them and sort of romanticise Ireland and I'm in Ireland and I love Ireland but it's not what you get in the films and you know yourself. Don't get me wrong it's beautiful and has such lovely landscape. It is entirely flawed as well. You know it's complex. No place is perfect. I don't know if you can see because the lighting isn't the best but I have been tabbing away on this book. I am finding plenty to tab and plenty to underline and that I feel like maybe I should underline that but I feel like oh maybe that's a bit overkill so yeah I could I could never decide on that part. <laughs> I feel like no one's ever going to read these copies of these books after me so that no one's going to pay attention to what I have and haven't underlined but I still kind of slightly judge myself and my lack of education in some forms. Not that I'm not educated but there are certain things that I just don't know about. That's fine. We all can't know everything. That is to say anyway pals that this book is very good. I do feel like I really truly adored it when I picked it up first and now that I'm settled into it. I like it. There are parts of it that are ruining me. There are quotes that are just hitting me deep. I really love the explorations of character and the explorations of relationships and places. But I do feel like it has potentially slowed a little bit for me in the middle. I'm not saying it's suffering from middle page syndrome, but it's slowed down for me in terms of my enjoyment, naturally enough, because there's nothing really exciting about this plot or anything. Because is it's it's just about ordinary life and ordinary people. I'm really enjoying the dynamics and we're getting a lot more of the dynamic between Peter and Ivan, between them and their mother and it's all really well explored and I just feel like Sally Rooney does it in a way that nobody else does and that there probably is a reason that her books are so hyped. I feel like they absolutely warrant it. All that to say now, pals, I'm going back to lie down, to re horizontalify myself, because the body is bodying. <laughs>
the 6th of October and I finished intermezzo on Monday which was the 30th of September and I feel like I've been dragging my feet a little bit in terms of wrapping up this vlog but it's because I'm struggling to articulate my feelings on this book. Straight away overall loved it. Still not my favourite Sally Rooney. My favourite Sally Rooney I feel will always be normal people and I know that a lot of people really dislike normal people but what I will say is sometimes I think that books meet us where we are and reading is incredibly subjective. There are certain stories that we can't relate to or empathise with or can't in some way find ourselves in and other stories that we can and it really depends on person to person and Normal People was my book. I saw a lot of myself in Intermezzo in many ways in a lot of the different characters and I thought a lot of that character exploration was impeccable as is very typical of Sally Rooney. The writing style was wonderful, it was amazing. I loved how it changed between perspectives, like when you read from Peter's perspective, the sentences are much more kind of short, stilted, like these are my thoughts and they're going from here to here to here, whereas Ivan was much more analytical, much more well thought out in his own thought processes. And it was just so interesting to see Sally Rooney's awareness of that and how she worked with that. Lads, aren't authors amazing? Like they have so much to do in a way so that we as readers don't notice that we're reading so that things never feel jilted or stilted or wrong. You never know how much disbelief people are willing to set aside. Authors are people who are sitting maybe at home or in a cafe or an office or in a library or on a plane or on a train or whatever and they're working alone and all of a sudden then they just put this work out there and it becomes everybody else's. I suppose I just really appreciated that while I was reading this book. It was really interesting to read a book written by Sally Rooney from the perspective of two men. It was definitely a choice and I don't mean that in a bad way but obviously we get insights into some of the other characters as well. That said, I do want to say justice for Sylvia because I personally felt that she deserved so much more and I don't mean that in terms of the plotting I just feel like I would have loved to see her character developed a lot more as well I just felt like it was left a little bit unresolved and maybe as a person who lives in a similar but not the same way that Sylvia does. Maybe that's me looking for answers because I can't find them for myself. And maybe I saw so much of myself in Sylvia's situation that I wondered, will Sally Rooney sort my life out for me? Uh, the answer is no, she won't. But overall, as I've mentioned, I really like this book. I'm kind of at a four to four and a half stars. But what I will say is I didn't rate the ending. I just don't think that she stuck the ending with this one. I feel like it was sort of rushed. It wasn't wrapped up properly. And I know you can argue that, well, it's real life and life doesn't just wrap up into a neat little bow. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that there were so many sort of deep conflicts and they sort of just dissolved into nothing without real resolution in terms of the plotting and in terms of character development and I don't know if that's a personal thing because I'm seeing across the board that people find this book pretty perfect but I found it felt a bit like okay we're working through this book and we're doing all this and then all of a sudden it's just kind of over. I won't lie I didn't necessarily enjoy exactly where the plot went. It's fine if a book doesn't go where I want it to or expect it to but I just felt like it didn't do the whole rest of the book justice. It's starting to sound like I didn't like the book or appreciate the book and that I don't love Sally Rooney and I will defend Sally Rooney's writing to the death. I am 100% on board with Sally Rooney. Don't get me wrong. I loved it and I think it's very much worth a read. If you're somebody who's really into character studies and being inside a character's head, if you want to read about chess, if you want to read about unorthodox relationships, or if you want to read a book that feels a little bit like an ode to the place that it's set in, absolutely read this book, pick it up. If you like Sally Rooney, pick it up. If you don't like Sally Rooney, give it a go. Intermezzo is very good at the emotive and technical 
aspects of writing I feel like it got the two very well mixed together but as I always say five stars is a feeling and this was not a five star book for me I thought that it might be when I started to read it but it wasn't and that's not to say it's not an absolutely brilliant book I am gonna close off this vlog thank you thank you thank you if you've made it this far leave me a little chess piece down in the comments let me know your thoughts on it did you enjoy this book did you hate it do you have criticisms let me know how you felt about it if you want to see more from me don't forget to subscribe i'll talk to you soon take care